Hello everyone. Today, we're going to review a project in which I've configured a WinTech HMI to use a single layer neural network to analyze data that occurred before an alarm was triggered and provide a prediction as to whether a new alarm is going to occur. Before we begin, it's important that we understand what a perceptron is so that we can understand how the application works. The perceptron is a basic artificial representation of a neuron that learns a decision boundary to classify a data set into two distinct groups. The inputs and outputs that are used to train the perceptron come from a labeled data set. This is known as supervised machine learning. For these reasons, the perceptron is often defined as an algorithm for supervised learning of binary classifiers. The algorithm is comprised of several components, an array of weights that determine the significance of each input, a method to compare each weight to the corresponding input, an activation function that is used to predict the output, a threshold that is compared to the weighted inputs within the activation function, a method to update our array of weights, a bias or learned parameter that allows our model to shift the decision boundary away from the origin, a parameter that determines the number of times that the training set is reviewed, a complete pass-through of the data set is known as one epoch, and an error function that is used to verify that the model has converged on a set of weights that minimize error. It is important to note that a single layer perceptron can only learn to classify data that is linearly separable. If the decision boundary is nonlinear, you will need to use a multi layer perceptron with nonlinear activation functions. While this brief introduction to the perceptron model is necessary in order to understand how the application works, I will not be discussing the mathematics behind this model within this tutorial. We'll cover that aspect within part two. Now that we have a basic understanding of the Perceptron model, let's review the application. The project on display has been configured to read both pressure and temperature data from an external device. However, for demonstration purposes, the data that we'll read within this tutorial will be generated randomly within a predefined range inside our meter macro, while failures will be simulated by our meter failure macro. With this configuration, the data is certain to be linearly separable. Now, to give us an idea as to how this project sources data for our algorithm, we begin by saving process data to retentive memory every 15 seconds. This action is performed by the store process data macro. If an alarm is triggered, the data stored within retentive memory is saved within our recipe database by the track alarms macro. The reason that I've configured the application to associate data prior to the alarm's occurrence with the alarm itself was an intent to influence the position of the decision boundary by bringing the data set that corresponds to an alarm's occurrence closer to the set in which an alarm does not occur. However, in practice, this may not be suitable or necessary for most applications. After an alarm occurs, our macro enables a timer that runs for 90 seconds. While the timer is active, any additional occurrences of the alarm will be considered as though they are related to the original occurrence, and process data will not be stored within our database. In order to make minor adjustments to the dataset, I have added both an add and delete button within the bottom left corner. The add button will trigger the save data macro. This macro will allow us to save process data that did not cause an alarm, while the delete button will remove the current selected record. After adjustments have been made, I can use the Reset button to retrain our perceptron using the modified data. Next to the array of buttons, I have configured a Predict Bit Lamp that will display the current prediction from our perceptron. If the lamp is on, our perceptron has determined that an alarm is likely to occur, whereas if the lamp is off, the perceptron has determined that an occurrence is unlikely. Above these items, there are four additional bit lamps that are in use. The alarm lamp will turn true when the alarm is active. The lamp labeled timer is addressed to the timer's output register and will turn true when the timer is active. The two lamps in the middle are related to the timer's input and measurement sequence and are not used within our logic. 
On the right side of our display, I have configured a hidden button that will trigger the meter failure macro. And above this, I have also configured a display to monitor the current log count titled Training Capacity. This will allow us to determine how many additional logs must be created before the HMI will begin to train with the current data. The numerator is addressed to the count attribute of our recipe, while the denominator is addressed to LW2, which is the total number of rows that our perceptron will evaluate. This number is set prior to runtime within our JS object. The JS object contains the source code that will allow the HMI to learn the array of weights that determine the significance of each input. I have placed this object on the common window so that it is active throughout the entire project. Within this object, I have organized certain components and two object types within the config tab. The values within each object are referenced within our source code and allow the JS object to interact with the HMI's internal registers. Before we look at our source code, let's first discuss the purpose of each component within the config tab. Beginning with the recipe object, the subscriptions allow us to pull data from the recipe database and assign it to elements within a multidimensional array. The selection address is used to update the value within the recipe.selection register, such that we select each row within the recipe database up to the training capacity. The settings object contains a numeric value that allows us to define the number of records that our perceptron will evaluate. This value is pre-configured by the HMI programmer prior to runtime, and the capacity address is used to set the number of records configured within the numeric object addressed to LW2 on our display. The save object contains both addresses and subscriptions that are used to either read or write the calculated weights within the HMI's retentive memory. The input object contains subscriptions that will allow us to read the current pressure and temperature data from our device, and the output object contains the address that our perceptron will write to when making a prediction. Within the source code, I've defined a math constant that requires an external library defined within our JS object resources. This library is called math.js and it contains a variety of methods, some of which allow us to simplify our perceptron class. Below this, I've defined several variables that reference static values and addresses within the config tab, as well as some that are used within data collection and calculation. The setInterval method performs a periodic call to the execute function every 5 seconds. This function handles data collection and calls to methods within the Perceptron class. The execute function will remain idle if the value within recipe.count is less than the training capacity configured within the JS object. However, once the count is greater than or equal to the number of records required to train, and the current weight values stored within a retentive memory are equal to zero, the JS object will begin filling what is essentially a two-dimensional array with values from our recipe database. It will continue this process until the current index is equal to the training capacity, at which point the execute function will instantiate a perceptron object with the data collected from our recipe database, and then call the perceptron's train method to learn the weights that it will use during prediction. Once the appropriate weights have been calculated, or if there are weights that already exist within retentive memory, the HMI will use the predict function within the perceptron class to predict the output based upon the current temperature and pressure. Now, as stated, I'm not going to explain the mathematics that allow the Perceptron to calculate the weights within this tutorial. We will cover this topic in part 2. However, let's review the structure of and methods within the Perceptron class. The Perceptron class has a constructor that takes inputs and outputs, the threshold, learning rate, and the number of epochs, so that these values may be used within the train or did converge method. The train method iterates through a for loop to the set number of epochs. Each weight is multiplied by the corresponding input and added together. The result is then compared to our threshold and a prediction is made. If the prediction was not accurate, the weights are recalculated and the errors determined. When this method is finished, the learned weights will be returned and the errors and weights logged within the console. Below the train method, we also have a predict method, which takes an array of inputs and weights and returns a prediction. 
The didConverge method will return true if at least the last half of the sum squared error array converged to zero. However, if this function returns false, that does not necessarily mean that the perceptron did not converge. We'll discuss this method in more detail in part two. Now that we have a general understanding as to how the code works, let's do a quick recap on the flow of this application. Starting from the beginning, the process data is stored within retentive memory every 15 seconds. The retentive memory holds this data and transfers it to the recipe database if an alarm occurs. The recipe database stores data until the record count reaches a certain capacity. At that time, the data will begin filling into a multidimensional array. Now, JavaScript doesn't actually support multidimensional arrays, but we've configured an array where each element is another array. Once the array has been filled, the data is sent to our perceptron, which learns the weights needed to classify input data. After which, the perceptron is used to predict if an alarm will occur every 5 seconds. I'd like to note that with the way this project is constructed, the HMI will also remember the weights that our perceptron learned. And in the event that the HMI is power cycled, the perceptron can immediately resume predicting output data. Now, if the user modifies the data and resets the current weights, the HMI will restart the process of filling data into the recipe database and into the array for evaluation. Let's run a simulation and gather some process data for our perceptron. I'll start by using the Add button to add a good data point, and then I'll trigger a failure to log a data point associated with an alarm's output. I want the perceptron to have a wide range of data so that it can accurately determine if an alarm will occur, so I've configured the capacity of our training set to 80 rows. And in order to save time, I'm going to pause the recording while I collect this data. With our training set full, the execute function will begin to increment the value within the recipe.selection register, and move the values within recipe.pressure and recipe.temperature into our input array. The values within recipe.alarm are stored within a separate output array. This process does take some time, but at this point nearly every record has been moved into an array. After the last record, the array is sent to the perceptron, which then quickly calculates the weights and logs the result within our console. Now our perceptron is ready to output a prediction as to whether an alarm will occur. To demonstrate this, I'll trigger a simulated failure, and what we should see is that our bitlamp labeled predict will turn true before an alarm actually occurs. When the alarm occurs, the bitlamp labeled alarm will turn true as well. And the algorithm was able to accurately predict that the alarm would occur. Thank you so much for watching this demonstration in which we've implemented a single layer neural network within a project designed for a WinTech CMT3162X. If you would like to test this project yourself, I have placed a download link for this application within the description. Please stick around for part 2 in which we'll explain some of the mathematics behind the perceptron model.